Well, there's a fine night in Amalri. There's quite a, a stiff southeasterly breeze, but, uh, well, it's not uncommon for the winds to blow in this direction, uh, all, all directions up in Amalri. I think I've mentioned that several times in the, the vlogs over the last nine months or ten months or eleven months. Yes, it's uh, quite a breezy spot in Persia, Amori. We're still on the 15th of June, 23. Um, I mentioned it was my uh, anniversary of my, well, of my father's passing uh, 11 years ago, so uh, although it was a Friday, it's, uh, it was a, the 15th of June, and uh, so I, I thought I'd come out of the house environment. I've I've no chores to do at all. I, well, I could make chores, but um, I'm up to date with everything in the garden as far as I'm concerned. And uh, like most people, the interior of the house can sit as it is until it's teeming of rain, and then we can get the uh, the furniture polished up. This is um, this is the disadvantage of not having that cleaner that I got rid of, and, uh, and I no longer employ a scullery maid. Uh, she walked out of me. Uh, she walked out on the job as well. She well, the cleaner was uh, made redundant. I was paying a a handsome fee, and she was milling around the house for over 50 hours a week and she, she was getting under my toes quite literally and um, I think that was the time she fainted and I trod on top of her I said, what are you doing? Get up and get on with your work but um, yes, the uh, the scullery maid was uh, well, she was alright um, I mean, she she done a good job but uh, she walked out. It was, uh, it was something to do with the sheen on the aluminium pots. Not in, inside, but on the base. I was suffering from my, well, a, a very severe bout of uh, obses obsessive compulsive disorder and uh, OCD. And uh, I said to her, can't you polish that up a little bit more? And she just walked out the kitchen door and I never saw her again. But um, everything looks very, very benign and calm and peaceful at the moment, doesn't it? I've, uh, I've got so many to load, I'm, I do apologise. What I think I shall do, I think I'll start with this one this evening, or, or perhaps something from earlier today, yes. Well, yes, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll put this up as... Um, and work the way back the way because uh, I've got about two weeks worth of footage that uh, I've been chatting the camera but it's not been loaded I'm sorry but um, you can appreciate this uh, very pleasant weather I'm not going to be singing staring at my computer screen or editing it uh, in, in such delightful evenings when I've been very busy and um, I haven't seen the spider again. Uh, I don't know where you went. I mean, the spiders are uh, absolutely amazing little things. They're uh, very secretive fellows, I think. And uh, they often appear in the sitting room or the bathroom. And they make their way around about the house at their leisure. And uh, they normally follow the moon cycles. I've noticed that they they definitely follow the moon and uh, make their appearance at a certain time of the the lunar cycle. Incidentally, we do have a new moon on uh, what day is this, Andrew? Well, it's the fifteenth, of course it is. And it's, um, this coming Sunday will be the 18th, uh, there was a new moon. The, the lunar cycle uh, runs uh, uh, parallel with the females 
menstrual cycle. I'm not sure if you knew that, but it's, it's true. It's the uh, exact number of days equates to the moon's cycle. Is it 29 and a half days, I think it is. But, um, so the new moon will fall in Gemini because we don't change into the Cancer sign until the 21st, which is also going to be, uh, of course, the the high point of the year, where it's, uh, well, I, I did mention it often, but we're, we're finally reaching there the next Wednesday. And uh, that will be, uh, the light will eventually start to dissipate in the, the late evenings, and... Uh, before we know it, it will be, well, July and uh, the light will start to fade at 10 o'clock-ish and by August, but it will be, you know, well, <laughs> it will be getting dark for just after nine, won't it, by the third week in August. And of course, there's out at Monique Castle there, what was that, it was Friday and Saturday of last week, and, uh, well, it was Saturday inside the building, but there was also there on Friday, but it was, I was still to load all this. But I got a little chat with her ladyship, and I, I enjoyed just catching up with things, and I said to her, I said, do you remember, uh, uh, um, oh God, I do your name. Do you remember Mrs. Orchison? She said, oh yes, I do. I do, delightful lady. And I says, Mrs. Orchison didn't have any running water and she didn't have any electricity. She just lived in that w one little building, at the West Lodge in the estate. And she says, that's right. She used to wash in the shaggy bun and the same place she gathered the water to drink. She was a fabulous lady, that Mrs. Orchison. I really liked her. Very fond of that lady. She was very, very kind to me, and she was very, very informative in her wisdom. So I think I'd go for a Barvik camp. I like going up the Barvik at the top. So I might tra you know, traipse up there tomorrow evening and set up camp for come back on Saturday afternoon or something. I like talking to my camera. I find it very therapeutic. Chit-chatting away. We well, were nobody else here. You know, obviously I'd be talking to them rather than my camera. If somebody was sitting here, but there's no one here. And I was chatting to a lot of people today, I mean, I have a family, I was, you know, on the bars and stuff, and, uh... I, I, th I get the impression from the, um... the co-op, um... Uh, I'm not sure, but I think they've been told not to spend so long uh, chatting to customers now. I, I, I don't know if that's a fact or just a, a, an observation, but, uh... I'm thinking that when you used to go into cooperative stores in the past, you could start a conversation, you could be chin-wagging away, and um, no one in the queue would bother, but um, it seems now there's so many people milling around in a rush. Uh, I think someone's complained, uh, you know, to higher supervisors or management in each of these stores or other, but sad, well, and I'm on a tight schedule and she's chatting away to so and so and a lot of drivel and uh, I, was, I was only in for a quick uh, purchase and uh, I was trying to buy a scratch card or something, that's what they probably say, I was trying to get a scratch card and I, was, I didn't have much time, I was in fever pitch, my gambling Obsession had taken over my brain, and I was trying to get a scratch card, and she kept talking to this woman. So I think what's happened is if um, 
they freely decided that, uh, you know, they've told the staff, uh, if you blink their um, shopping, I'd be a little courteous if you can, but no chin wagging, no, you know, extensive conversations about this or that. I'm quite sure that's happened, and it's only happened in, in recent months or, or even weeks, because um, I noticed in Aberfeld today, there was no, no one in the queue, and I said to the, I said to the woman about my cheese, um, it's two packs for five pounds, it's, 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 it's not a bad bargain to go with my macaroni and cheese. And she, um, I don't think she knew what she knew what macaroni and cheese was. I think that was a problem. I really, did, I don't think she did because I don't think she understood what I was talking about. Either that, she'd been, she was on the last warning for talking. It is so pleasurable because uh, sitting here in a, a mid-June evening and uh, it's just so gorgeous. I mean, I, 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 f I don't know, but uh, I mean, I'm looking at the landscape and I'm, I'm stationary here and I'm sitting in the vehicle. Uh, perhaps I should be walking around the moors or something, but there's too many ticks and stuff in amongst the heather, and uh, there's too many insects that land in your nose and stuff like that. But my point being is that uh, lots of people are not sitting staring at landscapes, they're sitting staring at East Enders or something crap like that, and uh, blaring, blaring in the in the sitting room, you know. A lot of shit from the east end of London. Just actors and actresses putting on the east end language and, uh, you know, not doing it terribly well. And just, just awful, dull, boring, you know, trivial storylines. I used to go on to my partners and I used to see my girlfriends and stuff. Why do you have to watch that shite? Because I like it, Andy. It's interesting. There's always a storyline. I said, it's, it's complete crap. I'm starting to question if I should be with you if, if you're watching that shite. I know it was a rather harsh thing to say, but it fed up with it. Coronation Street and Brookside and bloody EastEnders. I mean, even these bloody Cockneys and stuff, I mean... Uh, they have their own slang language and stuff. Well, what's the fucking point? What's the point of calling somebody a tea leaf? I mean, it's not, it's not really a, a secret language anymore if everybody knows what it means. You know, it's, it's just stupid nonsense. It's like a waste of verbal energy. Tea leaf. Thief. I think it's easier to say thief than it is tea leaf. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's, it's a rather silly business, isn't it? And I was thinking a lot of people may be coming over here, uh, migration and stuff, and, uh, you know, getting scattered about different communities and, you know, given priority homes and... Uh, and jobs and stuff like that, and additional money and all that sort of thing. But um, I'm thinking it's a bit of a, you know, someone can get the short straw in, in some, some respects because, uh, I mean, if you maybe land up somewhere like Inverness or something, or the Black Isle, um, the elocution in Inverness is, is, is rather... It's rather good, actually. It's a, it's a very, it's a, it's good articulation for you know for the English language. It's uh, it's well they're well spoken. Always have been. But of course, if you've um, come over, and you've been stuck up in Bankery or Fettercairn or something, as a, as your new 
and you're trying to learn the English language and uh, then you meet up with some of your fellow countrymen at a, a reunion or something and uh, um, someone says uh, Hello Zemo, how, how are you getting on with your English? Um, and they perhaps say, Nee, so bad. I'm all right. I'm getting on near too bad at all. If it like. And uh, I'm sorry, Zimu, but, but I, I'm not understanding you. What, what are you talking about? Well, it's been a broad day, and then I'm up here with the sheep and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like, um, I mean, if you maybe, I mean, everybody used to talk about the Queen's English and um, proper way to speak, and uh, and then for some reason they decided it was not, not the done thing. The problem is, is lots of people, you know, growing up, were trying to uh, speak as well as they could, and. Uh, Lots of parents paid a lot of money for the children to be educated to speak um, a little bit better than the, the rest of the classes. And, um, and what happens is they dilute the whole communication uh, of the language and uh, even the, the BBC presenters, which were, you know, really good with the Queen's English, as I recall, Speak in a strange, dull tone. It's, 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 in fact, it's not even their voice. It's, it's all pitched up and speeded up. Well, if it's Hugh Edwards, it's slowed down and dulled down, make it even more fucking boring. But that's Sophie Wayworth and all the rest of them. I mean, speak, why can't they just speak normal instead of being acting? And I don't know. I, 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 I remember you know, giving my age away here a little bit, but I remember uh, fantastic new readers like uh, uh, Kenneth Kendall and, uh, you know, Richard Baker and stuff. And fabulous news readers and for the BBC, for example. And, but in ITV, they had, you know, uh, Reginald Bosenquave, I think he was always pissed. And, and, and Sandy Gall, I think he was always pissed as well. But... Um, and who else had got Gordon Honeycomb? I mean, he wouldn't be allowed to read the news now, poor Gordon, because um, he's bald, and it's not uh, it's not fitting for the camera to be you know, well, he wasn't completely bald, but well, he was yeah, a little bit in the sides, but not much. But um, you know, so they wouldn't have news readers like that. I mean. They've got other newsreaders that have got uh, immaculate dyed hair. You won't see a newsreader with grey hair, not really. And the teeth are all false, they've all implanted teeth. In the, and they've got the, there's some of the things about their eye, around about their eyes, they're all nipped and tucked and stitched up, ironed out, and if they smile, the full fucking face cracks up. Yes, that's when it looks so boring when they're reading the news. They're not allowed to give any expressions because it makes their face fall apart from all the plastic surgery. Some of them don't even have their teeth fitting correctly. They shouldn't bother with them. What's wrong with their own teeth? I wouldn't mind if the newsreader had a couple of, you know, a bit of gum disease or a couple of black teeth or missing teeth. I think much better. Well, no, not missing teeth, that's too low vibration for me. But, um, yeah. Anyway, Andrew, I think you're ranting on an awful lot for a short upload, wouldn't you? I think you could carry away with your brain. I think you chat so much. Robert Dougal, I think he was the other newsreader, if I can remember correctly. Is it Robert Dougal? Yes. I mean, he was rather, rather a gentleman. He read, read the news perfectly well.
He read it splendidly. But, um, yeah, the, there's too many technicians and production staff involved in these news things now, and uh, I think what happens is they're all meddling with the voices, and, you know, if, if it's a syllable that's, uh, you know, incorrect, incorrectly pronounced, for example, they, you know, they're trying to dilute it out or iron it out in some way or enhance a vowel somewhere. It's just a it's just shite. It's just like music as well. It's like... No, we can sing a song anymore. It's always, it's all just manufactured crap. I want to hear music like it was, Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon, a little by love. <laughs> I mean, why can't they have like music like that? No, I don't want that either. In fact, it's just a, a terrible thought. It would be something like that fucking Kermit the Frog and Muppets and all the wishy-washy music we've been in the past with these fucking cuddly toy things and it, you, know, it's, you know, that was just crap and in fact it's... I can remember even Art, Art Garfunkel singing Bright Eyes. I think the whole of the 1975 was fucking ruined by the same number one, Bright Eyes. But a fucking rabbit. I mean, I think the rabbit was all right, but, uh, but uh, to, you know, to have a, a hit single fucking for about two months just showed you the... Even then, the people in the country were starting to go off the fucking nut. And there have been so many of these horrible, wishy-washy type songs that uh, became very popular, and I, I have to say, no, I, I don't want to hear Cat and the Fiddle with... Uh, you know, no, I don't want it. Forget it. Scrub it out, Eddie. I mean, that's imagine not missing your doorstep every single day of your life. I mean, it's, it's certainly better. Caught my eye just a little bit better at the brow of the hill just back there, but there's no parking places. You can't just pull up in the carriageway to stop and photograph something, you know. That's me'll do. You may have call one of my vlogs when I climbed there recently. It's it's just fantastic. There really is everything. But um, I don't recommend uh, you know making, wading your th yourself through any of that in, in shorts and stuff like that. It's just asking for trouble with uh, the insect bites. And, and particularly the ticks, which obviously carry Lyme's disease, which is a debilitating illness, uh, quite serious actually. But it's really, it's magical. You know, Reamer up here, in the shade. Yes. Glen Almond is, is it's simply fantastic, it's just fabulous. Beautiful place. I'm so pleased I've roamed so much of that on foot in all seasons. Because the mountains really speak to you, you see. It carries so many memories, the mountains, and filled with history and such joy. I often find the glens are, are more sad than the upper reaches and uh,
because we just don't know uh, who's all crossed that territory before us in, in the history of these mountains. But Fingal and Oshin would definitely have uh, roamed these parts with their warrior soldiers, and that's, that's for sure, in these Pictish lands. That's what I feel from uh, when I'm viewing them, eh? I'm almost sure that they're, they're sitting up there watching me, the spirits of them. Often seem to be. Come back up, Andy. You're very welcome. We like you. You're one of us. Come on, son. Get your climbing bits on and join us again. I'll be back up there. Okay, camera away. Andy. 